Hi, right then. So, in our last video, um, starting off the arterial supply of the head and neck, um, we came across the carotid systems and the vertebral basilic system. I said this was going to be three videos, okay, and the second was going to concentrate a bit on the maxillary artery, and that's what we're going to do here, okay? Um, so, if I'm putting a whole video together on the maxillary artery, you can imagine that what this means is that it's quite a busy artery, and it's got a lot to do. This is the diagram that we showed in the last, uh, in the last video. Okay, and this is the external carotid and the internal carotid arteries here. Okay, so this is our superficial, uh, superior thyroid, or ascending pharyngeal, lingual, facial, occipital artery, and then we are going to have our posterior auricular, and we're finally going to have quite high up. Okay, quite high up was the maxillary artery and the superficial temporal artery. Okay, so this is the one that we're concentrating on. Okay, so we're talking about the maxillary artery, and what it's got to do, it's got quite a lot to do, because this is going to head into the infratemporal fossa, okay, it's going to head down this way, okay, this artery has a lot to cover, okay, so what we really need to think about is exactly what this thing is about to start trying to do, okay, I'll tell you now, this artery is about to go all the way across there, and it's going to try and do all sorts of things, including, it's going to supply parts of the ear, it's going to try and supply parts of the pharynx, Okay. It's going to head in and it's going to supply a large portion of the, uh, of the upper arch of the teeth and it's also going to head towards the nose as well as getting the deeper side of the temporal region and the cheeks. Okay. So this is a, and eventually also heading out onto the face. Okay. So this is a massive amount of, um, a massive amount of things that this artery wants to achieve. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to sort of break it down a little bit and think about how it works. So here we go. If we look at this, at the minute, this is quite a, you know, a, uh, 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 this is the type of diagram that uh, will start making you, uh, making you sweat, okay? But, I'll tell you that the maxillary artery can be divided up into three areas, okay? It's divided up by this muscle here, okay? Now, um, you'll have come across this at some point in your course, okay? This is the lateral pterygoid muscle, which has uh, got two heads, one which is here, and one which is here, and they both head towards the temporal mandibular joint to the, the condyle of the mandible, okay, so that's where they're heading, okay, and what you have, if you imagine, this has been cut so you can see, okay, but what you have is a portion of, a portion of the maxillary artery which is before the, um, uh, meeting the lateral pterygoid, a portion of it which is between, which carries on between these two heads, and then a portion which carries on past that into the pterygopalatine fossa which we mentioned in the skull videos, okay, so we'll think of it in those terms. And where it starts off, okay, this is our superficial temporal artery from the external carotid, and this is the maxillary artery, okay, this here is the sphenomandibular ligament, okay, which is heading from the, um, uh, which is heading down here, and the maxillary artery starts off its first portion between the sphenomandibular and the mandible it's, uh, itself, okay, it's, it's, it's squashed into that area, okay. Now, and it's heading into the infratemporal fossa. So, if I just basically show you roughly on this skull, okay? Uh, if you don't mind this wire, I'll show you why that's relevant in a second. But bear in mind where we are, okay? The, uh, the carotid canal is across here, okay? So, just before we reach the carotid canal, just before that area, that's where we're going to give off our maxillary artery, okay? So, we're heading that way, okay? So, I'll keep this aside here, and we'll start having a look at the branches that we've got. Now, if we look here, okay, before some of the ones that you don't see very clearly at the very beginning, okay, are actually heading backwards, okay, and what we've got is, uh, between these two, we've got a, 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 um, a, a deep, um, we've got a deep artery which is heading towards the, um, uh, towards the, um, ear, which is the uh, deep auricular artery, okay? and we also have a um, uh, we also have uh, a little one which is actually heading inside the uh, petrous temporal bone, which is, going to, so it, which is called the anterior tympanic artery. So it's heading towards the drum. Okay, so these two are our first ones, which are heading backwards. Okay, now bear in mind the massive area that the maxillary artery is going to cover. Okay? We have. This one here, which we mentioned previously, okay, this going straight up here through this foramen spinosum, okay, this is the middle meningeal artery, and this is the one that we were saying, if you have a, uh, a fracture of the pterion, this is the one that's going to get ruptured, so just to remind you, okay, this here, okay, this here, that, can you see that? 
sorry, I've got that in an appropriate place for you. That there is foramen spinosum. Okay. So if you've got the maxillary artery coming across here, this middle meningeal artery is going to go up here. Okay. That makes sense. Can you see that? Got it. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. So that's your middle meningeal artery. Okay. So we've given off already, okay, just as we've just started, we've given off these two branches to the ear, ear, and we've given off our middle meningeal artery. We then give off this quite major branch, okay, which is going to actually go down and do the lower arch of the teeth. Okay, this is the uh, inferior alveolar artery. Okay, now if we look at the mandible, okay, if we look at the mandible, this is the mandibular foramen, and through it goes through the inferior alveolar nerve and the inferior alveolar artery. Okay, and they're going to supply both uh, supply nervous and uh, blood supply to the teeth. Okay, of the lower arch of the mandible. Okay, so that's the um, and it will emerge from the mental foramen as the mental artery. Okay, and that's that coming across here. And what I should specifically mention is that it gives off a branch down here. This is called the mylohyoid branch, the mylohyoid artery. Okay, which is coming down to supply the mylohyoid muscle, forming the floor of the mouth. That pretty much takes us through the first section of the maxillary artery. So we've actually covered quite a lot already. But as we head further this way, okay, the lateral pterygoid muscle is going to be uh, head is going to be uh, giving off its two heads to the uh, to the TMJ, okay, and the maxillary artery is going to be travelling through the two heads of the lateral pterygoid, and that's demonstrated on the screen here. Okay, so the major branches in this region are actually just doing the deep surfaces of the muscular so where we had our superficial temporal artery coming from the, uh, uh, the carotid and doing the outside of the temporalis muscle the deep temporal arteries here do the inside of the uh, temporalis muscle and the temporal fossa okay? and we also have a buccal branch, a buccal artery which is doing the buccal mucosa of the cheek and buccinata and all of those muscles in there okay? and that's what the middle section of the maxillary artery do. So we've basically got two sections done already, covered. Okay. If we keep going, okay, it's not, um, we'll use another diagram to get a little bit further into here because where we're going with this, okay, if I come back to my skull, is, try and get this into the light for you again, we've come all the way across there. Okay, we've given off our deep temporal branches and our buccal branches, okay, and where we're heading is we're going to start heading towards this area that we mentioned a little while ago. Okay? This is the pterygopalatine fossa, okay? and that there, can you see that? Is that okay for you? Yep. Yep. So, across the pterygopalatine fossa is where we're heading with our last area. Okay? So we've come out of the lateral pterygoid muscles, uh, of between the lateral pterygoid heads, and we're heading towards the pterygopalatine fossa. So this is the pterygopalatine, the posterior border of the mandible. This is the sphenoid bone coming across here. This is the lateral pterygoid plate here. Okay. And what we have, and we've given off our buccal branches and our deep temporal branches. And what we have is a few things here: a posterior superior alveolar artery. Okay. Now that's feel that's actually a long name, but it's pretty similar. Uh, simple. Okay. Posterior, the back. Okay. Superior, upper. Okay. Alveolus, the alveolar ridges are the parts of the maxilla which bear the teeth. Okay, so we've got the back teeth okay, of the upper arch being supplied. Okay, so we've got posterior superior alveolar artery, okay, and it's supplying the molars and the premolars. Okay, so we've got that. We've got a branch that's going off backwards and heading towards the pharynx. We've also got this branch here. Okay, this one here is the greater palatine artery. Okay, the greater palatine artery which gives off a lesser palatine branch which supplies the soft palate across here and the greater palatine artery itself travels across the palate okay so if I show you the palate here okay so the greater palatine artery uh, travels across here okay and it enters at the end into the incisal foramen there okay and we'll talk about that in just two minutes okay so that's the greater palatine artery there. So we've done the greater palatine, we've got the posterior superior alveoli. All right. We've talked about the pharyngeal artery there. And in the meantime, our terminal branches of the maxillary artery are this sphenopalatine, which we'll come to in a second, and this infraorbital artery. Okay? So the infraorbital artery is going to go through, um, through the infraorbital canal 
and come out of the infraorbital foramen at the uh, at the end. So what I've done here with this skull is I've tried to thread this through. So basically, this is the infraorbital uh, foramen there. Okay, and where it's coming from is can you see that properly? Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got the maxillary artery coming across there, and its terminal branch right at the end there is going to be is going to head through that canal, and it's going to start supplying areas of the face here mainly. Okay. Now the one that I haven't threaded through because I can't on this, okay, is the sphena palatine artery, which is heading deep, 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 okay, into the pterygo palatine fossa. Okay. It's going right, right, right in there. Okay. So I can't quite show you that. Um, but hopefully you can see it uh, on your camera angle there, okay? You're going right into there. And it makes sense that with your sphenoid bone that you're next to, and also as you go deeper, okay, we've got the palatine bone here, okay, that there is a sphenopalatine foramen that the sphenopalatine artery goes through, okay? And it's heading towards, it's heading towards, you got it? Can you see it? It's heading towards the nasal area. Now, that's all of our branches of the uh, of the um, maxillary artery. There's one other little one that I'll just point out for just a second, just so that we cover the teeth entirely. Just notice from the inferior alveolar artery, uh, sorry, from the infraorbital artery, there is this anterior alveolar branch which does the incisors and the canines, okay, the uh, the anterior teeth. So we've got the teeth covered. We've done the lower ones with the infra, uh, inferior alveolar uh, artery previously, and we've done all the teeth here with the uh, greater palatine, the posterior superior alveolar, and the anterior alveolar artery. Okay? So that's all of our branches here. Now, we'll come back to the sphenopalatine uh, and the greater palatine in a couple of minutes, but I just want to point out one thing. All of this is from the external carotid system. Okay, which has been all from the maxillary artery. Just remember what I said previously about the internal carotid. The internal carotid, its first branch is in the head. Okay, it's in the head, and it's the ophthalmic artery before it um, before it branches out to uh, make the middle and uh, anterior cerebral arteries of the circle of Willis. Now, this is a view looking down onto the orbit. So, if I point out here, okay, this is the optic canal here, and what we've done is we've taken off. The, um, the frontal bone here so that we can see down into the orbit. And all I want to point out to you here is this. This ophthalmic division of the, uh, of the internal carotid artery, okay, that's the first division, gives off an anterior and a posterior ethmoidal artery. Okay, so that's the cribriform plates that we've seen previously. And we are heading in, we're perforating into the nose. Okay? The reason why I'm pointing this out is this is a sagittal section through the nasal area and through the palate, okay, so this is the hard palate across here, this is the, uh, the cartilages and the bones of the nose, okay, this is uh, the frontal sinus, that's the sphenoidal sinus, okay. Now what we have here, the sphenopalatine artery, where it go, uh, goes from the, uh, from the sphenop uh, going through the sphenopalatine foramen, is into this area, okay, and it meets here, okay, with some branches of the greater palatine artery. I said they went through the incisal foramen before, okay, so it goes upwards into the nose. It meets here, okay, and in the meantime, and these are all from the external carotid, okay, uh, originally. From the internal carotid, we've just met the anterior and the posterior ethmoid arteries, which come down from the orbit, and um, across from the orbit, sorry, and into this area, okay, and this area is called Kieselbach's plexus, or Little's area, and the reason it's important is because these, it's such a high volume of vessels in this little area, that, uh, and they're such tiny, tiny, tiny little vessels that they can frequently rupture, cause nosebleeds, and, um, and, uh, and uh, they often need to be uh, cauterized. Okay? So what I'm saying to you is that the internal and the external carotid systems meet at Little's area, or Kieselbach's plexus. Okay? And what you may need to do, or may find yourself doing clinically, if these uh, start to uh, rupture, is you might find yourself doing something like, say, for example, placing a little bit of anaesthetic with a bit of um, a vasoconstrictor like adrenaline or something like that in there, and then maybe packing the nose or possibly cauterizing things. And what you can sometimes do, if you can see a little bleed from maybe the top end, you can kind of assume that it's maybe probably from the internal carotid end, or if it's from the lower end, it's probably from the external carotid branches. Okay, so this is just a little bit of clinical relevance to why you um, to where these arteries go and um, and why they why they might be of importance to you.